Hey there, my name is Nikki Tregos of Life by Design. I am a letterer, artist, and designer. I'm coming to you today from my little painting nook in my studio where I want to talk to you about watercolor supplies. If you're new to watercolor painting, I'm going to recommend the absolute minimums that I suggest you have in your toolkit as you start to learn and explore watercolor painting. So in this video, you'll expect to see some of my favorite tools and paint, as well as the one brush I can't live without that you need to have in your watercolor kit. So first, let's start talking about paper. So watercolor paper comes in a variety of textures. There's hot press and cold press. It all really depends on how much texture, how smooth the watercolor paper is. I'm going to recommend that you start with a very inexpensive pad. This is Kenson watercolor paper. It's um, a cold pressed, which means it has a little bit of a texture to it, but it's quite smooth. As you begin to play with your watercolor and explore watercolor medium, you'll decide for yourself what paper you love to paint on, but I love this paper for um, any sketch work that I'm doing, as well as finished work. A tip that I like to share with you is so you're not intimidated. Sometimes when we open a new pad of paper, we look at how large the paper is and we're intimidated because we have to then feel the pressure of filling that paper with some watercolor painting. Well, what I like to do is cut down my sheets into smaller pieces so that I can paint um, in smaller subjects, especially when I'm sketching ideas. So then you'll end up having a few just really inspiring, beautiful and colorful sheets of watercolors that you can begin painting with. Okay, so a Canson pad, and I'll have everything listed in the description below with links so you can have a look at them. So a Canson pad will um, go a long way, great for sketching and even finished pieces. Cut them down to smaller sheets so that way you can work um, with a less intimidated, uh, less intimidating um, canvas. Okay, what I also like to do is grab sketchbooks. I'm kind of a paper junkie and hoarder, so sketchbooks or notebooks, journals are. Um, very abundant in my studio. I picked up this one from my local book supply store, so it's a Chapters Indigo, and the paper isn't ideal for watercolor, but I actually don't mind. So when I'm just doing sketch work, and even I'll show you to my lettering, so that's with a dip pen and ink. I'll get close-ups with that too. Um, you'll be able to use a sketchbook like this just to hash out some ideas, um, some things that you're working on. And again, it's less pressure when you're working small, but sometimes can be intimidating if you are feeling like you need to put something special in a notebook. So pros and cons, but look for a multimedia or mixed media type paper that um, can accept the wet medium. So with watercolor, you need to be able to um, use the, pa the paint wet. And if the paper is very fine or a little too thin that it'll buckle okay so watercolor paint needs a good thick textured um, or not even texture but a nice thick watercolor paper okay so let's move on to our paint watercolor paint comes in a variety of forms um, I like to work out of tubes or even using a dry palette so tubes can be a really inexpensive way to invest in good quality watercolor um, versus buying a pan that's probably less quality, so maybe a student grade, that doesn't have good pigment payoff. So these little tubes are about five to six dollars on Amazon, depending on what series of paint there that it is. The Winsor & Newton is a good quality brand. If you get the professional brand, they're only about five, six dollars. And this is a series one, so the higher the number in the series, the higher the quality, the pigment, and the paint is. So look for a Winsor & Newton, just a series one is what I recommend. And um, the colors that I recommend you start with are listed below. But you can see I've got five tubes here, not a lot of investment, um, but with these colors, you'll be able to mix your um, primary colors and make your secondary and tertiary colors. And if you're not familiar with mixing colors, I do cover that in an upcoming video as well as in my watercolor class, okay? So I recommend tubes. So those are two things, we've got paper and tubes. Next up is my absolute must. So if you're just starting to build your watercolor toolkit, I even use this brush for when I'm painting in acrylics, um, I recommend that you invest in a round brush. With this round brush, I'm able to create thin and thick strokes. I can paint florals as well as, as, well as lettering. It all is about the snap of the brush. So this one is a Princeton Heritage Round in a size eight. Um, so if you have good snap, meaning your brush um, 
can flow really nicely across the page, but also bounces back. It gives you the best control when you're painting, as well as when you're changing the pressure of your brush, you're able to create nice thick broad strokes. And as you're releasing the pressure on your brush, you can create nice thin strokes. So great for when you're painting florals or abstracts, as well as lettering. So I can do everything with this single brush. And I'll show you that in an upcoming video as well. Again, cover that in my course. But um, I recommend you start, this is a size six in the Princeton, it's a Neptune. I also like, um, this is a size eight, and you can get even larger. Here's another one in the Princeton Velvet Touch, which is, I guess I'm a big Princeton fan. Um, that is a size 12. Okay, and I'll show you up close of those ones as well in action. So my absolute must, you need to invest in a round brush and a good quality round brush. And they're not very expensive. Again, I'll link below so that you can take a look at costs and work within your budget. So really, once you have your brushes, your paints of uh, tubes of paint, as well as your paper, there's only really a few things left that you need to invest in. So I recommend a good quality palette. I like a ceramic one. I don't know, it just kind of feels special. When you're painting, it's such a joy to be able to express yourself and play with color and play with um, even motifs and things that you'd like to paint. So when you invest one time in a nice palette, you kind of feel like it's a special practice and it is, treat yourself. So the palette's probably a little bit more expensive than a plastic one. If you like to work larger, I, um, I have a bunch of palettes. So when I'm mixing colors and I need some room just to spread out, I'll grab this plastic large um, watercolor palette that I have some dried watercolors. So that's just for my tubes. When they dry, you can still reactivate them with water. So I like to have a big one to work on. And I also have this butcher's pen, which is kind of cool too. I love this. This I just got recently and um, I haven't used it as, lot, as much, which you can see, but I do love that pan, okay? So invest in a palette so that you can mix your watercolor. And remember when your watercolor dries in the palette, don't wash it away, because you can reactivate your uh, pigment just by adding some water to it. Next up, two jars of water. So make sure that you're mixing light colors in one jar and dark colors in the other jar. Um, I like to have big and big jars and a lot of water in them so that they don't get muddy too quickly. What is another trick of mine is I actually use an eyedropper to reactivate. So I'll take my palette, a little bit of my clean water, and then I'll just take some water in my dropper and uh, reactivate my watercolor and then swirl my brush in it so that I'm not overusing my brush and it starts to activate right away. I'm a bit impatient so sometimes the process of watercolor is um, very slow and meditative but sometimes I like to speed up the process a little bit. That's just me. Okay, so next up, the only other things you'll need are a stack of paper towels so that you can blot your brush on and um, be able to clean your brush off as well. And then if you need, I don't tend to draw out my motifs. I like to act, um, paint more intuitively, but a, a pencil, I was gonna call it a paintbrush, a pencil is next up on my supply list. Maybe some washi tape so that you can tape down your paper because it will start to buckle if you're using a lot of water on whatever it is that you're painting and um, just an eraser and a pencil sharpener to make sure you have a very sharp point on your pencil okay so those are my essential tools for your watercolor kit as you start to begin uh, exploring watercolor and practicing along with me i hope you subscribe i'll be producing a ton more videos in watercolor format as well as showing you some lettering using a dip pen using a brush pen because that is another passion of mine make sure to subscribe follow me at life i design on social media and my website is lifebydesign.com i look forward to you tuning back in and learning along with me